What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans film breakdown. Today, we've got another throwback breakdown with the legendary Andre Johnson. And shoutouts to those who recommended him will be right after the film. Dre was special, man. He was a tough son of a bitch and he was one of, if not the most physical wide receivers I've ever seen. If you wanted to create a wide receiver in a lab, you would make Dre. He's the greatest Texans wide receiver of all time, no question, and today I'm going to be breaking down his film from the 2012 season because that's as far as the All-22 film goes back, so unfortunately it's not exactly prime athletic Dre, but he was still a dominant force and actually had the most yards of his career with 1600. And if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, this will be the last week for y'all to fill out the feedback survey, it'll only take a couple minutes and it's the best way for your voice to be heard as to what type of content y'all want to see when the season starts. Do you want breakdowns on specific players, schemes, matchups? I want to hear all your ideas. That link will be in the description. I really appreciate any and all feedback. Now, let's break down the film of Andre Johnson because the film don't lie. Dre was good at so many things, it's hard to really narrow it down to just a couple, but one thing he was, was dominant and dependable at the catch point. He had great hands, especially in traffic, and I'll get to that, but I want to showcase his ability to win on jump balls. It wasn't that apparent in 2012, as Dre was 31, but it was a huge part of his game during his prime years, and he mastered the art of the subtle push-off to create space. He was a red zone killer because you just couldn't match up a cornerback on him. He was too big at 6'3", and a good like 225, 230, and he was just a brute, just too dominant physically for you to do anything. He'd push you away and just create space so easily to make it an easy throw even when he looked covered. When all else failed, just throwing up the ball to him was your safest bet. He was really a cheat code. His long arms meant that you didn't have to throw the most accurate ball, and he would still come down with it. As a quarterback, it helps you make throws that you otherwise just shouldn't because he's just that special and you can always count on him to be there for you. He's someone you can count on as your main wide receiver one to get open, but even when he was covered, he was never really covered. It didn't matter if defenders were draped all over him. He had strong hands that refused to drop the ball. He embraced the challenge of being contested and it brought out a different beast inside of him. For as great as he is, NFL defenses and cornerbacks are no joke. He's gone up against his fair share of Hall of Famers, but a lot of the time, good defenses get beat by better offense. And that's what Dre was. He was just better. He was talented, but he also just wanted it more than anyone else on the field. He was a fierce competitor. He had that dog in him, and I'd love to have that out of my players. With all that being said, let's not act like Dre can't run routes. He was a very good route runner, underrated even. And when you have both, when you can get open with ease and make a catch or make contested catches, that honestly just makes you unguardable. The main part I love about Dre's route running was his physicality. He knew he was bigger than most cornerbacks and he used that to his advantage. He would straight bully cornerbacks, definitely pushing the bounds of offensive pass interference, but they rarely ever called it. I mean, just look how much space he creates just because he's just that much stronger than the cornerback in front of him. He knew exactly how to sell his curl routes, firing downfield, head over his toes, indicating he wants to go deep, and that gets the cornerback running full speed to keep up, and then at the last second, he would just toss you aside like a kid tired of his old toy. I love that he could just push anyone off their spot. It didn't matter who you were or if you ate your Wheaties that morning, he was running through you and getting open. He was a killer on slant routes because of this. He was hell bent on winning inside leverage and was really good at using his hands to get what he wants. The cornerback is going to jam him and try and be physical right back, but Dre had the technique to throw a counter punch, just swiping away the corner's hands and getting him out of position so that he can win inside on the slant. But he wasn't just good with his hands, he was good with his feet, specifically being deceptive with his feet. When you're running a slant, you want to win inside, but that doesn't mean your first cut should be inside. As a wide receiver, you're trying to tell the cornerback a story. You're trying to tell them the wrong story, actually. You want to get them to react and move in the opposite direction of where you want to win on your route. So, you want to win the inside on a slant? Okay, tell them the story that makes it look like you want to win to the outside. Dre was amazing at that, always taking a step or two to the outside, showing a go route, but then actually breaking inside on a different route. That's what his entire bag was predicated off of. Every route looks like a go. You have to respect my deep speed on every route or else I'm going to burn you for a 50 yard touchdown. And that thought, that fear, that story that's in the cornerback's mind, that's just a whole lot of thinking that they're doing and not a whole lot of reacting to Dre's movements. That gets them faked out, that gets them out of position, and it's all because of the detail, nuance, and technique that Dre had in his routes. 
Now, this next route is my favorite that I saw, and the cornerback must be pissed because it seemed like he thought he had Dre all figured out. He's thinking, okay, whichever way you go first, you're just gonna end up cutting in the opposite direction, right? Wrong. Dre sets this up beautifully. He releases outside like he always does, selling that go route so that the cornerback's thinking, okay, he started outside, he's gonna go back inside. And then Dre goes inside and the cornerback has them all figured out. So he flips his hips inside and he's waiting. He's ready for an in-breaking route, a dig, a post, whatever. He's ready for it. But Dre's got him right where he wants him because he's actually going outside and he wanted the cornerback to bite inside. So he snaps off the route and creates tons of space and the cornerback is just confused. He's defeated. Dre's just one step ahead of him at all times. Another amazing route he was great at was a stutter and go double move. He routinely won with this move, taking advantage of cornerback's aggressiveness because we saw before how he would just eat on simple curl routes and throughout the game, cornerbacks were getting tired of getting beat and they just want to jump the curl route when they see it and Dre makes them pay. He sells the go at first, then he stutters his feet, but this is what I love. He takes an extra step to the inside. Most wide receivers just stutter the feet and take off running, but Dre isn't most wide receivers. He takes it that extra mile by just adding in that one extra step, that little detail to really make it believable. And it works. The cornerback bites and he's burnt like toast. And this leads to my next point about Dre being so good at making big plays happen. None of those underneath routes work if the defense isn't scared of his ability to take the top off. And they certainly should have been scared. Again, this is his 2012 season where the man was 31 and he still had juice, serious juice, where he didn't need to fake you out. He could just turn on the burners and run right by you. It didn't matter if you had a cushion or if you were trying to press and throw him off. He was a cheat code. Most guys his size can't move that fast. Again, 6'3", 225, 230, but man, he was just built different. There really wasn't anything that he couldn't do against champ bailey right here and he doesn't stand a chance this is old man against old man and dre got him beat the only thing stopping him was shab under throwing the ball but even then he still almost always found a way to bring it down not even his own quarterback could stop him dre was just an animal man and this is where his contested catch ability comes back into play you can just always trust just chucking the ball up to him while he definitely had speed, as that speed diminished over his career like any other wide receiver, he needed to become more reliant on beating defenses mentally, and he was great at that too. On this play, the defense is in off cover 3, and Dre is running a post. As we see here, the cornerback has his hips flipped inside, indicating zone, and that he's ready to break on any in-breaking route like the post that Dre is running, and so to combat this, Dre needs to sell the go for as long as possible, eat up the cushion the cornerback has on him, because he knows that he'll make the cornerback scared. And the second that the corner starts running backwards to go with the go and respect that, Dre cuts it off and boom, that's just easy money, but it's all because of how smart he was and attacking that cornerback's cushion. And here's another one where he's gonna get double teamed, but that doesn't even matter. Dre's so good that he's able to split them both. So the defense is in cover one, and since we have an extra tight end staying in to block, the safety that was guarding him turns into an extra defender on Dre. So the cornerback has Dre if he goes to the outside, and the safety has him if he goes to the inside, and Dre knows this. So he releases inside just a little bit, so that the defense is thinking that, okay, maybe he's running a skinny post, and that the safety is the one who's got to take him. But instead of continuing horizontally across the field, running right into where the safety's at, Dre just cuts it upfield instead, running vertical and just straight down the seam, which is right in between where both defenders are located, and so neither of them are really close enough to actually guard him. It's a very, very subtle detail, but that's what this game is all about. The little adjustments go a long way. All right, that'll do it for my Andre Johnson film breakdown. It was super fun to go back and watch his film and just admire how great he was. So thank you to those who recommended. I do a video on him. So shout out Dagda twice. <laughs> also Lewis Mulholland, Mike Honjo, Chris Solano, and Lewis again. And I apologize if I pronounced anyone's names wrong or missed your comment about Dre, but I really appreciate your input and love interacting with y'all in the comments. So back to Andre, he was athletically and physically dominant, but also smart, skilled, and nuanced in getting open. I really can't wait to see him get inducted into the Hall of Fame because he was a special talent. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one. I appreciate you. And the question of the day is, who do you think will have the better overall career, Andre Johnson or DeAndre Hopkins? 
let me know. Also, one last reminder to quickly fill out the survey I made for y'all. You can give feedback on the quality and content of my videos, and also let me know what type of content you want to see when the season starts. I really want to hear your ideas. Also, I would love if y'all could check out our great work at Texans Unfiltered. We've got a great website where I write articles, weekly podcasts, and YouTube channel as well. All of those links will be linked in the description. I would really appreciate if y'all could check us out. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more videos every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film don't lie.